Always wear clean, chemical-resistant, powder-free gloves when performing this procedure. If installed, remove any sample plates. In the console, select Sample Manager FTN from the system tree. From the menu bar, click Maintain, Replace Needle. A message appears warning that the needle will move when the action is accepted and to keep clear of the chamber. A reminder to calibrate the needle Z axis and to characterize the needle seal after replacing the needle also appears. Click OK. A second message reminds you to click Reset to return the instrument to normal operation and to keep clear of the sample chamber after replacing the hardware. Using the T20 Torx driver, loosen the two captive screws that secure the access panel, and then remove the panel. Unscrew the needle assembly's fitting from port 4 of the injector valve. Using a T10 Torx driver, Loosen the latch screw that secures the needle tube in place. Free the needle tube from the latch. And then push the needle latch back, remove the needle tubing from its notch, and the needle mounting cylinder from its cavity. Carefully lift the needle out of the needle guide at the bottom of the needle mechanism. To avoid injury or damage to the needle, do not touch or press the tip of the sample needle. Using the T6 Torx driver, Loosen the needle guide set screw and then remove the needle guide with a pair of tweezers or needle nose pliers. With the conical side up, install the new needle guide and tighten the set screw. Turn off the power to the sample manager. Manually turn the spline shaft to raise the needle carriage. Insert the needle tube into the top and left notches and the mounting cylinder into the mounting cavity. Push the needle latch back and then gently lower the needle into the guide. If required, use a blunt tool to position the needle into the guide. Keep lowering the needle until it emerges about one millimeter out the bottom of the needle guide. The needle should then loop over and above so that it can be inserted in the front needle guide. Insert the sheath covered needle tube into the front needle guide and secure the latch with the T10 Torx screw. To the end of the needle tube, properly position a compression screw and the two-piece swage lock ferrules. Next, make a bend in the tubing in the shape of the letter J, as in the needle you removed. Finally, ensure that the needle tubing is fully inserted into port 4 of the injector valve, and then tighten the fitting. Tighten 3 quarters of a turn beyond finger tight. When replacing the needle and guide, you must always replace the Vespel seat. To replace the Vespel seat, Remove the T10 torque screw that secures the inject wash station to the sample compartment floor. Lift the assembly upward and remove it and the seal extension tube from the sample compartment. Next, unscrew the needle wash tube from the wash fitting. Then unscrew the wash fitting from the inject wash station. While holding the assembly in a vertical position, slide the support sleeve out of the metal housing and guide the seal extension tube through the slots. To help ensure that the metal spring stays in place and in the proper position, rest the metal housing back in place on the compartment floor. While holding the peak support sleeve with the half inch open end wrench, Loosen the lock nut using the 5 16 inch open end wrench, then unscrew the support sleeve from the lock nut. Using tweezers or needle nose pliers, remove the Vespel seat from the seal extension tube port and discard the seat. Insert a new Vespel seat, large seal side up, into the seal extension tube port. Next, insert the seal extension tube with Vespel seat into the support sleeve. Finger tighten the support sleeve onto the lock nut. While holding the peak support sleeve with the half inch open end wrench, 
tighten the lock nut one quarter turn past finger tight using the 5 16 inch open end wrench. The seal extension tube should be in alignment with the threaded wash fitting hole in the support sleeve. To avoid interfering with the motion of the spring in the metal housing, the bend in the seal extension tube must not extend beyond the step in the lock nut. Ensure that the load cell with cable and spring cup are properly positioned in the inject wash station. Slide the seal extension tube into the slot on the side of the metal housing. When sliding the support sleeve into the metal housing, ensure the fitting hole of the support sleeve aligns with the slot on the metal housing. It is extremely important that the three prongs on the lock nut are seated inside the metal spring. Being careful not to cross thread the wash tube fitting, carefully screw it into the support sleeve and tighten it a quarter turn past finger tight. Then screw the needle wash tube into the wash fitting and tighten it a quarter turn past finger tight. The wash tube and seal extension tube must be routed in front of the load cell cable. Align the screw hole of the inject wash station with the hole in the compartment floor. Be aware that there are unused holes in the sample compartment floor. Ensure that the inject port wash drain is in the needle wash basin. The wash tube is secured to the wall and should not interfere with the sample tray operation or vertical motion of the wash port. Secure the inject wash station to the chassis using the T10 Torx driver. Next, replace the access panel and ensure that the seal extension tube is routed through the cutout. Finally, calibrate the needle's Z-axis. Characterize the needle seal and perform the needle seal readiness test.